Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to trim the bangs on your synthetic wigs. What did you do? I just can't get enough Too caught up in your love Stop thinking about you all right, so today I wanted to come on here and show you guys how you can actually trim the bangs on a wig that you get that has bangs already on them. All right, so as you can see, I look absolutely ridiculous in this wig because I can't see anything. You're only gonna really need two, actually three things for this. And the first thing's gonna be some scissors. I recommend something that's gonna be really sharp, something that's gonna be easy to cut through. Fabric scissors work really great because this is also a synthetic material or some hair cutting shears work great too. You're also going to want a brush. This is my brush coming soon. Ding, shameless plug. Um, and then you're also going to want a heat comb or some type of heat tool that's going to help us seal the ends when we're done cutting this wig. So I'm going to put this on a wig head and I'm going to show you guys how to cut this wig. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna recommend is you put some type of wig grip, or if you have pins, you're gonna to wanna to pin your wig to this cap because it's just gonna help it stay secure while we're actually cutting. I don't want this to move on me when I'm actually doing any cutting or anything to this wig. All right, now that we have this on here, and I kind of have an idea that I'm about what I need to trim off of this, I highly recommend you putting it on your head first. See what you need to take off so you are kind of aware of how much needs to go. And then I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we're gonna go into this and we're gonna actually do a lot of point cutting, which is where we're gonna take these scissors and we're going to point cut them like this along the wig itself. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do this super up close, but I wanna just try to show you the motion that's gonna happen here. And that's gonna help us really bring them up without them being super blunt. And it's gonna also help us kind of hide any imperfections in length by doing this type of cutting. All right, so the first thing I recommend doing is actually taking this and sectioning it off a little bit past the bang. The reason I like to do this is because I like to have a little bit of this extra long hair to almost blend this bang in because a lot of times, especially when you get these wigs off of Amazon for like under 20 bucks, which this is one of those wigs, it's gonna have a very blunt stop to the bang and I wanna kind of blend that into the front of the hairline. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and part, like I said, a little bit off of each side and I'll show you guys what to do with this at the end. Now, full disclaimer, I am not a hairdresser. I am not a professional hairstylist whatsoever. I am just someone who wears wigs and has figured out how to kind of make things work for me. So this is just how I do it. Once you get those pieces pulled off, I do recommend you just pulling this hair out of the way so you don't have any issues, you don't actually cut anything that you don't want to trim off of this wig. All right, so now that I have this pulled away from the rest of the hair that I'm gonna be working with, I'm gonna go ahead and check out these bangs. So what I wanna do is I wanna find where these bangs start because I do have this extra hair here. And if you want, once you pull this hair back, you can always pull this away because we're not gonna be working with this right now, but we are gonna use it later. So a lot of times I just like to pull it out of the way, but I wanna keep it sectioned off so I don't mix it in with the other hair. All right, so this is the bang area that we're gonna be working with. And as you can see right here, and as you can see when I had it on my face, it was a little bit too short for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and you wanna go ahead and take your hands. I find this helps me a lot is if I take my hand here and I just kind of run it down. And right here, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking my scissors and I'm going to point cut. That is what the professionals in the biz say. I am not a professional in the biz, but I heard that's what they say. I'm gonna go ahead and just start point cutting this to kind of just get that length a little bit shorter. If you need to cut off a lot of this bang, I would recommend going ahead and coming to the point where you need cutting straight across what you need to take off and then point cutting. But because I don't need to take a ton off, I'm just gonna point cut to get it to the length that I need it to be. But if you're going with more than like a half an inch, I would just cut across first and then point cut. The biggest thing is, is that you can always take more off. You cannot put it back on. So I would rather sit here for 20 minutes doing this than accidentally take a big chunk of hair off and realize I took way too much off once I put it on my face. And I just kind of move my hands up a little bit further as I do this, just to get a little bit more of that point cut as I go. And it's not gonna be this jagged blunt 
bang, it's gonna be a nice kind of more wispy, natural looking bang. And I like this too, because there really isn't as much precision with it, because if you are not a professional hairdresser like me, anything that requires any straight cutting or precision cutting, I suck at that, just so you know. Not my strong suit. I cannot put eyeliner on in a straight line. I cannot walk in a straight line, so I can definitely not cut in a straight line. And then I'm just gonna bring my scissors up a little bit higher, just to kind of help also thin those bangs out because they were a little bit blunt. This is also a great thing to do, even if you don't wanna get rid of length, but you feel like the bang is very straight and blunt. If you just take your scissors and do a little bit of this, it's gonna help soften that end up and it's gonna make it look more wispy and just more natural. So what I wanna do is I wanna kinda of layer these in so it's not such a blunt end to the bang. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and take our scissors that we have here. And I grab this last little section I have of my bang. And then I'm gonna hold that with the hair. So it kinda of lines up and you can see where that bang ends and where the hair starts. And I'm gonna start right where that bang ends. I line it up with my hands. I point my fingers down like I'm pointing at the ground and then I line it up underneath my hand. Does that help? And then I just slowly, I do little tiny scissor cuts and I just slowly side my hand down. I don't know how the professionals would describe this to you, but this is what they do to ankle layers into your face. And then we just kind of do that. And this one, I'm gonna go ahead and run one more pass because it's not as blunt and serious as the other side. And again, like doing this is kind of nice because it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's just gonna kind of look wispy and it just kind of helps blend it in. And I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna pull the rest of the hair down. I'm gonna put this wig back on my head um, and I'm gonna show you guys. But the last little step I wanna make sure that you guys know about and you do. On synthetic wigs, it's very similar to the concept of split ends. So what'll happen is if you don't actually seal these, they can start to fray and run a lot faster. So I always recommend taking a heat comb. Um, I always want it to be kind of at a low temp. So I'm gonna go 300, 300 degrees. And I just wanna run these through the ends of the wig just to kind of smooth them out, make sure there isn't any crazy like frizziness happening and anywhere I else cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this really low temperature and run it through really quickly so I don't lose my curl, but I just kind of help Seal those ends. And this is super important, like I said, it just kind of helps keep the running from happening as quickly. The other cool, cool thing that you can do with a heat comb like this is if you have some bangs that look super flat and you need some volume, you can take it as well and give it some volume at the root. Or if you have a lot of permatease, you can go ahead and remove it with this too. I'm gonna go ahead and do a separate video all about permatease, so it'll be out for you guys, but that's also another option as well when it comes to bangs because those are things that usually you'll find in bang units. Oh my God, I can see you guys so much better now. This is so much better than it was before. So like I said, make sure you go ahead and point cut your scissors to go ahead and get this length. If it's way too long, you can go ahead and cut some first and then point cut. You also wanna make sure you brush it out with your brush just to get any of those weird flyaways or anything that's left over. I also recommend doing the little kind of side pieces just to blend in the bangs. If you don't need to do it, it's definitely an option. It's not required. And then the last thing you're always gonna wanna do if you take scissors to your wigs is take a heat comb or some type of heat tool and seal those ends because it's gonna help keep them from running and splitting. And that's gonna just make your wig last so much longer. All right, so now you guys know how to fix those bangs if they come in looking all crazy. I hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you on the next one.